Could this be the secret weapon to weight loss? All new Oz. The certain foods that work with the grapefruits that help you boost that weight loss faster. Then, it's been five months since we've lost her. How are you coping? Carrie Fisher's sister, Jolie, on losing her hero. I think that my sister was deliciously flawed. I mean, she made flawed a museum quality art form. <laughs> All new Oz. What if you could go from this to this? Haley did. How about this to this? Michelle pulled that off. And guess what? So can you, with the help of the secret weapon. Because grapefruit, that's right, grapefruit, could be it. All month long, we're revealing the best detoxes you need to try. And today, the grapefruit detox that can help you slim down and lose weight in just seven days. Does grapefruit for weight loss sound familiar? Probably, right? We all heard about it. It may remind you of big hair and stonewashed jeans, right? They're all laughing and sort of embarrassingly. But first, I want to get everyone up to speed, so take a look. Grapefruit. Let's clear a few things up first. Is it a fruit? Yes. Is it a grape? No. So why the name grapefruit? That's a story dating back centuries. Back in the late 1600s, an English ship commander brought pomelo seeds, one of grapefruit's ancestors, to the West Indies. Those seeds were then somehow crossed with an orange. Fast forward a hundred years or so to the 1800s, when a Jamaican farmer is said to have coined the term grapefruit, which refers to both the shape of the fruit and the fact that it grows on trees in clusters, similar to, you guessed it, grapes. We got the name down. So how did grapefruit get so popular in America? Let's jump to the 1930s, when the grapefruit became the it fruit of the decade, once people realized it may help them lose weight. The so-called Hollywood diet focused on eating grapefruit at every meal because many believed that enzymes in the forbidden fruit burned off fat. Over the years, especially in the 70s and 80s, the diet transformed into a detox that attracted loyal followers like Kylie Minogue and Brooke Shields. The grapefruit diet. It's been in, it's been out. It's been in, it's been out. But today, it's back in and potentially better than ever. So can this new and improved detox really help you lose weight? Grapefruit's back for weight loss and better than ever with our new seven-day detox. Nutritionist and naturopathic doctor Kellyanne Petrucci is here. Hello. Everyone is still thinking about yeah. it from the 80s. How is this grapefruit program different from what we remember from back then? Well, we were all starving ourselves back then, but we have evolved because this detox is all about losing the weight, mm -hmm. but losing the weight by eating food with the grapefruit. Because what we found is there's certain foods that work with the grapefruit that help you boost that weight loss faster. And what that means for you, better fat burning. And guess what? You're no longer hungry. So these foods are an accomplice to the grapefruit. I'm going to have Kelly and explain to you all why grapefruit is the ultimate weapon for weight loss. Yeah. We have yep. a couple models up here. And I want you all to get this in your mind because it's not about having chocolate cake with grapefruit. No. It's very different. These right. are different kind of foods, special kind of foods. And the first thing it's going to do, it's going to boost your metabolism. And we love this. Grapefruit has something in it called nucatones. Mm -hmm. And animal studies have shown us that these nucatones help boost our metabolism. And studies are even showing us, this is really amazing, that even smelling the grapefruit boosts our mood. So right. for people who are emotional eaters, this is a big help. It makes sense for citrus in general. It really does. Okay, second reason it sense. makes sense to help lose weight. Yeah, so high in fiber. I love, love, love fiber because fiber keeps you fuller longer. And that's a real big win-win. And guess what else? Helps you keep the slim, no bloating because you move things through those intestines. So what that means, you beat the bloat. Okay, so bloat's out, weight's coming off. Yep. And finally, you like it because? Yeah, so this is really, really important. Controls your blood sugar. This is really a big key right here because that keeps you feeling stable and good all day because those cravings and crashes, mm -hmm. guess what they do? They make you hungry all day. Sure. So you want something that really stabilizes your blood sugar and you can do that with the grapefruit. You get that sweet, tangy taste, so it's wonderful. And you avoid the roller coaster yes. to your point. So, the, the results that we can expect, if we do this correctly, mm. and again, this is all about 
well, we'll get to the golden rules in a second. Yes. But to do it right, how much weight could you lose? You can lose up to a half a pound to a pound a day. But what else is beautiful, you are going to really, yeah, yeah, isn't that wonderful? Yeah. You're going to lose the bloat mm -hmm. and you get an extra boost That's because right. there's a lot of vitamin C in there. So you're getting an immunity boost too. So it's really healthy and you're looking better and you're feeling better. All right, talk about dosage. The golden rule of the seven day yeah. grapefruit detox is to eat this. Yes. A half of a grapefruit at every meal. That's it, a half a grapefruit. Why, by the way, why not more? Because that's all you need. So I've tested this out with patients and they get the results from a half a grapefruit. You can either have it with a meal or you can have it in a drink, a juice. But you know what, Dr. Oz, my favorite way, pair it with a meal. Yeah. Because really, it tastes great. It gives you that extra fat-burning boost. And I brought some of my favorite meals with me today. All right, so we, before you get to eat all the meals you want to eat mm -hmm. for seven days, you got to remember that the women in those amazing pictures, remember the ones I talked about? They have little tidbits of information they can share with you. So yeah. they're actually here today in person. Haley and Michelle, come on out. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Hi, That's Haley wonderful. Michelle. Hi. Hello. You look beautiful, and I Thank wore my you. shirt. Say so congratulations. Oh, you did? <laughs> okay. We all have our grapefruit collars on today. I wore mine. Congratulations. I'm going to put you over here, though. Yes. I'll put the grapefruits together. Yes. That's perfect. <laughs> Actually, I didn't that See? Before. See that? We go right. together. I didn't get the memo. I just waiting. So, Haley, how yes. much weight have you lost? Well, Dr. Oz, I lost nine pounds. Not bad. In a week. Seven days. Seven days. Wonderful. What, what can you wear now that you couldn't wear a week ago? Well, I have have these high-waisted jeans that they fit completely now. I used to, high, like, you know, do the little shimmy in. <laughs> yeah. But um, even besides the clothes, it's just how I feel. Like, I have so much more energy. I have three kids I have to be running yes. behind. So just waking up at 6 a.m. and feeling like I can fold up some clothes and all of this other stuff, it's just a really great feeling. And Michelle, was your experience similar? How much weight have you lost? I lost seven pounds. Wow. You did? Congratulations. Yes. Seven days, seven Those pounds. Those are the numbers you were giving us. Yeah, half a pound to a pound a day. And yeah. I, just speak to everybody about how this may have changed how you view detoxing in general. You know what? Uh, before I was apprehensive, but now I totally love it. I love grapefruit and I want to stick with the plan. Like I want to keep on with the detox. Good for you. Yes. Come on back. I want you to show everybody how you incorporated grapefruit into your diets. So again, if you're going to do the detox, you got to have the formula the right way. So the yes. first formula is you want a half of a grapefruit with four ounces of right. protein. Half grapefruit, four, four ounces, ounces of protein. protein. Haley and Michelle, what you guys make? Well, I do the, um, chicken, and um, the chicken sausage with the grapefruit. And yes, you can have chicken sausage. With, I mean, that's a really hearty and wonderful meal. It tastes great. You think you can't have these foods, but they actually work well together. And th th what's this? Is? This, this, is is, this is the four ounces of protein, as we said, with the half a grapefruit. Bacon. Yes, I said bacon. bacon. Nitrate-free bacon. is. We give you a pass on that. It actually is a great fat burner when you have it with the grapefruit. Did you find that to be useful? It was so good and it's so easy to make. It didn't take a long time, which I need. As so a mother, so as quick. a mother, does that not speak to you? It was awesome. It's so Amazing. important. Yes. But wh why is this combo so important yeah. in the morning? Well, you know what? Your brain actually loves the natural sugars that are in grapefruit. It fires it up, gets you going for the day, gives you that energy that we're talking about. And the protein actually helps balance your blood sugar. We talked about that up here, how important that is. So your blood sugar is balanced, your brain is fired up, you're ready to go. What a way to start the day because you're not hungry an hour later, right? Absolutely. That's the key. So come over here, both of you guys. I'm gonna just, I want you, I want to spin you, come over. I want to spin you around. <laughs> go spin around here. You deserve it. <laughs> that, <laughs> that is really something to see. I'm very proud of you, Haley Michelle. It is Ultimate Detox Month, and we're back with a seven-day grapefruit detox for weight loss. Dr. Kellyanne Petrucci is here breaking it all down for us. Yeah. Now take a look at this picture of Dr. Kellyanne. Ah. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. That was her in the 80s what an when 80s the, beauty. the old grapefruit diet uh -huh. was very popular. I'm telling you. So I, I don't know. I won't embarrass you alone. I'll embarrass myself. This uh -huh. is me in 1982. It's only fair. Look at this. This is a. <laughs> oh, he gets the cute picture. I had What's a great on colored here? shirt on. I don't know, Dr. Oz. I feel like going to a Duran Duran concert all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> so it does age us, but it was popular, but we didn't do it right. Yeah. This, I think, and in fairness, it yeah. probably worked still for some people, but this is a way but of doing it. But were they comfortable? That's yeah. the question. No, it's and this, this is a way of doing it that makes sense and is smart, and we've already seen evidence that it works. So yeah. remember that golden grapefruit rule. You all remember that half a grapefruit with every meal. One half. Mm -hmm. there, look how golden and beautiful it is. That's it. So what do you have for lunch? Simple formula, half a grapefruit, that's the golden rule, plus one healthy fat, 
and unlimited veggies. Vegetables. As many as you I want. I love that. That's where your energy is coming from. So I love that. And this is my favorite because this is skewers that are made with the half a grapefruit that we talked about, mm -hmm. that healthy fat that's so necessary, and we have some jicama. But here's why this is important. Mm -hmm. Because lunchtime really is the dieter's milestone. It's like you just need something to get you over that hump. You're yep. almost there. Yep. You need that little bit of encouragement. And see, the fat in these skewers, what they're going to do, they're going to get you over that hump. Mm -hmm. They're going to they're take you through till dinner time. So, you know, you stick to this. You stick to the plan. And again, sweet and tangy, tastes delicious. You're not feeling like you're missing anything. And you're not hungry like we were in the 80s. Now, you, you pick jicama, but I do. any vegetable could work. Any vegetable. I just like jicama because it's crunchy yeah. and it's sweet. Has that great. It just really pairs well it's with a the grapefruit. Sweet way to have it. It exactly is. Right. Yeah. All right. New way to eat grapefruit for dinner is going to wake up your flatter belly. Is important. You got to give it to us. Mm. It's a secret. Okay. So this is. is like this is the bomb. This is my all-time favorite favorite bowl. This is not a boring salad. I can promise you this. This is a great dinner because we want to stick to the formula again. So for dinner, we want to make sure we have protein. We want to make sure we have the right carbohydrate in here. You're going to get all of that so in just, here. Just to give and, so it's a cup of ancient yep, grains, which yep. is the big secret here. That ancient is, grains. Yep with veggies and four ounces of protein. Right. But before we get to- Cooked ancient, one cup of cooked ancient grains. That's Why really are they important. so important for this? So this is really important. Ancient grains, and I know you're thinking, grains, has she lost her mind? You've yes. got to be kidding me. <laughs> but these grains are ancient grains. And how they react in your body is a little bit different and it stabilizes your blood sugar, keeps you from those cravings and crashes that we talked about earlier. My favorite, wild rice and quinoa. Reacts really well on the body and it satiates you. And again, we want to be comfortable. We want to get the job done. There's more than one way to skin a cat here. You can actually lose weight and still be comfortable. But there's taff. There's a whole bunch of ancient grains. Yes. Pick whatever you want. Yes. You have diversity. Whatever in you want. Absolutely. All right. So uh, ancient grains, vegetables, all you mm -hmm. want. The half cup of grapefruit. Yeah. Why is this so important? at nighttime to do oh, this right. Yeah, I really love this because these richer grains, the ancient grains, they're very soothing and they're mm. very calming to the body. So they help prepare your body for the night's fast because that's what you're doing at night when you're sleeping, yeah. you're fasting. So you sleep better. And we all know that better sleep means better weight loss. Yeah. And also, the enzymes that are in the ancient, ancient grains, mm. you digest them better. So between that and the fiber and the grapefruit, guess what? Big bonus you wake up with no bloat. So you wake up well rested, no bloat. That's a win-win. We're back with a seven day grapefruit detox. Now that you know how it can help you blast fat, we're gonna reveal the secret to picking the best ones, plus a new way to eat it that's gonna save you a lot of time. Jackie's here to help me tell you the first part. You like grapefruits? I don't buy grapefruits. You don't buy grapefruits? No. Have we changed your mind about grapefruits a little bit? I feel like next time I go to the store, I will buy one. Okay. So if you walked into a store, which grapefruit would you pick? Can I touch them? Touch Not them. that one. Why? What's wrong with this one? It's bruised. It's bruised. Well, mm -hmm. picky. I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to look. I would look for pink. I would feel like it would be sweeter, the pink ones, maybe. So it's interesting. Yeah. It turns out the color on the surface is not all that important. Oh. What is important is make sure that you get one that, for example, without a lot of blemishes on it. Okay. And then feel the weight. Can we compare these two in particular? Can compare those? Heavier. So, heavier. So you want a denser, heavier, because it's going to have more juice. Okay. Now, it, Turns out the white ones, like this, taste great and they're still good for you. Okay. But if they have a little pigment in them, if they're pink or if they're red, they have lycopene, which is an extra antioxidant, extra little boost mm -hmm. for everything. So I prefer you get those and you have to actually, they'll, they'll say which one it is. Okay. So these are gifts from the show to you. Thank you. So, since I, if you don't like them, give them to a friend. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, thank enjoy you. your grapefruit. Now, the question is, how do you cut your grapefruits? In the center. Ha! No? Not anymore. Okay. You all cut them in the middle, don't you? Yeah. So when I was growing up, I, that's not how I eat grapefruits. I was taught to eat them differently, but I saw someone today who eats them in a similar way, so I've asked her to come on. This is the easiest, fastest way to make grapefruits. You will all be eating this way from now on. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. So this is Taylor, and she's going to show you how to do it the right way, the way that saves time, money, and doesn't splatter grapefruit all nope. over yours. You have uh, one of those spoons that you have the little serrations on it that you dig yes. out the grapefruit. You dig it up, you yep. scoop it up, yes. And you waste half of it on your shirt and the other half still in the grapefruit, right? Yes, pretty you, have to much. Still, you squeeze the rind to get the last of it in your mouth afterwards. 
<laughs> All right. No more of that. Here, keep hold that for a second. All right, show us how to do it. Okay, well, just like she said, you'll no longer have to buy any more of those spoons to help you eat this grapefruit. Um, I find this to be the most simple way to eat it just because for me it's similar to an orange, but I think everyone would agree with me when they say that this is not the fruit they'd pick up because it's so tedious to cut into. Right. So first we're gonna start, it's very simple. All you have to do is put it on its side and we're gonna cut off the top part first. Then flip it over and cut off the bottom. This is where it gets fancy, guys. Are you ready? Stay with us here. And now, where most people would try and cut off the skin, all you really need to do to save time... I got a better way. I'm going to modify Taylor. Are you ready? You cut the top of the bottom off? Yep. Just flip it on one of those sides. Yep. Now it won't slip and cut your finger off. No. Now go. Now show them. Okay, and now what we're going to do is just cut it into little wheels. Okay? <laughs> look at this, guys. Am I changing your lives for the better today? I mean, look at this. No more whining and complaining. Now look at this. The rind comes off easily. Yeah, you, you can pop that in your right mouth, off. and you just had your grapefruit. Is that impressive? Yeah. All month long, we are remembering celebrities gone too soon, whose deaths make us wonder and ask, what really happened? Today, an iconic day for Star Wars fans. Why? Because it's May 4th, right? May the 4th be with you. It said a lot. Ironic that we'll talk about it today. Right now, millions of Star Wars fans around the world are remembering the shocking death of actress Carrie Fisher that shook the universe to its core. She redefined what a princess was, a true force to be reckoned with, and a hero of fans around the world. Today, we examine her final moments. What really happened on that plane before she collapsed? An emergency medical expert answers the big question and sifts through all the information. Could she have been saved? We'll also sit down in an exclusive interview with Carrie's sister, Jolie Fisher, who reveals what they talked about in their last conversation. But first, reporter Michael Yo walks us through those terrifying moments when she collapsed. Friday, December 23rd, 2016, 9.27 a.m., Heathrow Airport, London. Carrie Fisher had just finished filming on the Amazon series Catastrophe and was headed home to Los Angeles on United Airlines Flight 935, an 11-hour trip. As the plane approached LAX, a few minutes before landing, Fisher went into cardiac arrest. Passengers and crew, including a doctor and nurses, reportedly jumped into action and administered CPR. A pilot radioed ahead just before landing. We have some uh, passengers, nurses assisting the passenger with an unresponsive passenger. 12.25 p.m., Los Angeles International Airport. Flight 935 touched down at LAX, where I spoke with paramedic John Everlove, who's examined the information. So what do we know about what happened on the plane? Well, we know Carrie Fisher goes into cardiac arrest and trying to manage that situation would have been challenging given lack of equipment, lack of resources, confined space, and the other passengers on the flight. And for the paramedics showing up, what situation are they walking into? Similar challenges trying to get Miss Fisher off the aircraft and into their treatment environment in the back of the ambulance. Fisher was rushed to Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center 11 miles away. So this is the route they took from the airport to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Typically, what are the paramedics going through in a situation like this? Well, traditionally, we're trying to understand the patient condition. We're assessing the patient and providing treatment and interventions to solve problems. Now, we know every second counts. Uh, was UCLA the closest hospital? That's a great question. In this case, it wasn't. Usually with a cardiac arrest patient, we go to the closest facility. So what's that tell you about her condition in the ambulance? It tells me that something in her condition changed, which made UCLA, uh, which is one of the leading cardiac care centers in this area, the more appropriate destination for that condition. Here at UCLA Medical Center, Carrie Fisher was taken to ICU and placed on a ventilator as the world waited for news about the beloved actress. Reporters began a vigil outside the hospital. Fisher's brother Todd reported that his sister's condition was unknown, stating, there's no good news or bad news. December 27th, 2016, 8.55 a.m. But bad news did come. Four days after that fateful final flight, two days after Christmas, Carrie Fisher passed away.
There's an important message here. It's, it's not about getting to the hospital. It's about getting the best treatment when you get there. So if everyone out there, you should know your stroke and heart specialist in your area. That's where you want to go if you're having a crisis. Reporter Michael Yo joins me now. So why are we searching still, still, about what really happened to Carrie Fisher? I believe so because she was co-lead of one of the biggest movie franchises ever, probably the biggest movie franchise, Star Wars. And when we heard she survived in the plane and made it to the hospital and was fighting, 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 a lot of fans and a lot of people that loved her felt like we had hope that she was gonna win. And then when we heard that fateful news, it was just a tragic turn and a lot of people are still trying to cope with it. So you've heard about a premonition yes. that she apparently had from a pretty good source. You've mm -hmm. heard this story. I'd love if you would share with everybody. Like guys, sometimes we hear these things, we can't make sense. This time we actually have yeah, an this, expert. Well, <laughs> this is from the words of James Blunt. He's a musical artist. He was actually great friends with Carrie Fisher, lived in her house while he was making his first album, Back to Bedlam. And he named it that because he said Carrie Fisher's house was so crazy. It was a madhouse <laughs> over there. So he um, said that just a, she played a kind of joke on him, put a cardboard cutout of Princess Leia outside his door and put her date of birth and the day she was gonna die. He looked at the cardboard cutout and was like, that's way too soon. And then he realized after she passed, it was pretty much right on. Oh my. Yeah, and that makes this story very creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know she, people say she had a quirky sense of humor. She had a very dark sense of humor, and everyone knew that, so James just chalked it up to that. As the world mourned the death of Carrie Fisher, her family fought to find peace amongst their unimaginable grief. Her sister Jolie spoke out just days after her death and said, You all lost Princess Leia and Carrie Fisher. I lost my hero, my mentor my mirror. Today, Jolie Fisher is here to open up about her final moments with Carrie and the shocking health revelation she's facing after her sister's death. And I thank her for being here today. Bless you. I love your poetic post in a time of great grief for you. How, how was your sister your mirror? Well, you know, now that I think about <laughs> saying that, I, I often think we, we don't always like what we see in the mirror. So it was, it's, a, it's a complex, layered thing to look at someone and to respect who they are and to admire them, but also to, to see where their flaws are. And I think that my sister was deliciously flawed. I mean, she made flawed a museum quality art form. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, it's a difficult thing. We, we all, I, I think, still feel this loss. It's a, there's a chasm on the planet where she was or is still. Which of her flaws did you love the most? <laughs> I always um, ask family members that because there's something in there that just made her who she was for I just you. think she made, um, she was able to make words dance on the page. And I think that she told her story in, with such humor and such authenticity, um, all her stories. And we can spend time with her anytime we want in the pages of those books, we really can. Um, you know, she was carried a Coke and a cigarette. You know, that's, <laughs> there's a problem with that, folks. <laughs> as funny as At all times. At all times. <laughs> so it's been five months since we've lost her. How are you coping? How's the family coping? Um, you know, I, I, they say seven stages of grief. I think it's more like 77. Like I find myself, I'm a mother of five people and I am an actress and I'm directing my first movie and I'm doing many things. So I have to go on with life. But I do find myself... Um, you know, seeing those pictures just now, it's, you know,